Hey there, and welcome to Large Format Friday. I'm your host, Matt Mirage. If this is the first time you're stopping by the channel, there's a playlist of our entire third season of LFF. And if you haven't subscribed yet, each and every Friday, we're gonna be here and we're gonna be chatting about something large format. Oh man, this week has been a tough one because every single day has been the same cloudy, dreary, rainy, and this might be the only small little peak of sunlight uh, I'm gonna get for the next week or so. So I'm gonna take advantage of it. You know, one of the topics in large format that I don't think gets talked about enough is the idea of output. What do you plan on doing with these photos? And it's okay if the answer is nothing, but it's also a good idea to think about it. So are these photographs for you? Are they for some commercial intent? Is this going to go as fine art prints that you put up for sale? Are they gonna go on social media? Are they something that you want a printed archive of? We all have slightly different wants and needs with large format, and it's a good idea to consider that when you're setting up the shot. For me personally today, my goal is to set up a simple family portrait, Laura and the dogs, add a little bit of reflectance with this to fill in shadows, and hopefully come out with something that I can produce an 8x10 contact print with. One of the things I love about 8x10 but also can make it kind of expensive is the format has some versatility. The negative is large enough that I can make a suitable contact print, so no need to enlarge. It's My print is 8x10 inches in size because my negative is, but it's also going to lend itself pretty easily to scanning. So uh, the largest reasonable size for a flatbed scanner is 8x10 because most scanning surfaces are eight and a half by 11. There are some larger ones, uh, but those can go up considerably in price and may have some software compatibility issues. So the idea of output is a really, a really, really good one to consider. Are you enlarging? Are you just scanning? Do you plan on doing a little bit of both? These are all questions you should ask yourself when you're first getting into large format, when you're deciding, okay, should I build out my kit a little bit more? Is this where I wanna be right now? Initially, I got it because I was enlarging, but now I don't have access to one, but I, I don't hate it. I still enjoy making contact prints and doing scanned enlargements, and really anymore, uh, I don't do as many big prints as I did when I first started. So before the weather starts to, uh, starts to break down and we start to get more rain, I'm gonna set up a portrait of Lauren the dogs, and we're gonna get going here. So come along for the ride. All right, let's check focus here. Right, right here. Feels a little bit out of focus because she's slightly forward to you, so that's fine. I'm gonna just tilt it a bit. Okay, I got it. So one little trick I'm using for this portrait is just a very, very minuscule amount of front tilt. A little bit of forward tilt is gonna go a long way in this case because I've got Zill five or six inches in front of Lauren here. And if I focus on Lauren and then I apply a small bit of forward tilt uh, to the point at which Zill's in sharp focus, what I'm doing is I'm cutting a slice of sharp focus uh, through both of them. So the advantage to large format is we can change our plane of sharp focus as well as our perspective by changing uh, how, how far the light has to travel uh, to hit the film. So. Might as well take advantage of it. That small bit of forward tilt is my favorite thing to use with portraits. It helps make sure even if your subject leans a little bit or relaxes, uh, that you can get a little bit closer to that sharp focus. Got the Raveni back out today. Okay, ISO 100, that's what we're reading today. And let's meet her lore, 60th, 30th, 60th. So at f8, we are at 1 30th of a second, uh, right in the middle. The only range I have in my exposure is about two and a half stops. It is super, super flat. One thing I can do to kind of boost that a little bit is mark my film holder for extended development. So once I have my exposure made in camera with that 30th of a second f8, I'm also going to mark this film for an n plus one development. That's going to develop it for a longer time, hopefully boosting my contrast to give me that extra oomph in the photo. All right, got that first one ready. Check everything here. Good. Zill, strudel, 
Strudel. Zil, do you want to go for a car ride? So here I'm even closer to Lauren and Strudel, and you can see I've used an even bigger amount of tilt because I'm closer. That's gonna accentuate those differences between where Strudel's snoot is and where Lauren is. So I'm focusing here, and I've got my front tilt giving me a slice of sharp focus like this. Now I'm gonna be doing a, a slightly slower exposure because I do have a little bit of bellows extension factor here. With that bellows factor, it's gonna give me a bit of a hard time. Ready? All right, one more, and then we're going in. Fantastic, oh. There you go. <gasps> Two, retreat. Nice, okay. Well, so much for no rain. Film's gonna be fine. Camera certainly fine. There's no electronics. I really just gotta worry about uh, what's filming this thing. All right, let's get to the dark room. So we just got done processing the film. I also went ahead and made some eight x 10 silver gelatin contact prints just to show the difference in output. Uh, first thing I'm gonna throw up on the screen here are some quick scans. When you output via a scan, the cool thing is, yeah, you can make it really whatever tone and value you want. You get all the dodging and burning, but there's something missing. That thing for me is physical presence. So having it in a print, even if it's not exactly where you want it to be for starters, at least it's a print. It's hands-on, you can touch it, and it's like, yes, this is, this is a photograph now. And after doing that, I was still jazzed. I was like, you know what? We're talking about output. We might as well do another form of it. So I'm also here at 400 West Rich. I'm gonna go ahead and coat up some more emulsion for some platinum palladium. We're gonna print those out and we're gonna compare all three. Really for uh, these portraits, I really liked how the silver gelatin prints turned out. It was a film that I know very well, which is the expired T-Max 100. Some of my last sheets of that really good density, know exactly how that prints under the enlarger at Midwest Photo. And then I played around with the platinum as well. The drops and times that I was using for Delta 100 turned out to be a little bit on the short side for what I might have needed for that T-Max 100. We still got some nice looking prints, maybe a little bit on the more delicate side in the highlights region. But nonetheless, I had three different renditions of the same exact portrait that I took earlier today and I couldn't be happier. I want to take a moment to give a huge thank you to everybody who tuned into Large Format Live here at 400 Westrich on Sunday. We had a great turnout. We had folks from nearly 30 different countries. During that, lots of good questions and answers. And even my buddy Stephen came by for, uh, for his own tips and tricks. So thank you so much for that. And a huge shout out to all of my LFF sustaining members. Uh, the list continues to grow here of all of our LFF sustaining members. If you want to find out more about supporting the channel in a meaningful way, you can go to mirage.com slash memberships, or if you want to do a one-time donation, mirage.com slash donate. So which of the three was your favorite? How do you like to handle your large format output? I want to know down in the description below because I have a pretty good idea of who the audience is, but I also want to know how you like to shoot because it'll guide really any content I make going forward. And uh, I want to dive deeper into each of these little topics, but I don't want to feel like I'm taking the channel like too far off the rails of large format. I'm already kind of loose on those terms because we can take what we learn here on the channel uh, and apply it to different types of uh, traditional and maybe even some digital photography. If you have any questions about the large format photographic process or any of those techniques that you saw here today, uh, be sure to get subscribed and check out some of the previous season's playlists. There might be some answers to questions you didn't know you had there. Uh, and for everything else, you can feel free to shoot me an email, largeformatquestions at gmail.com. Thanks again for stopping by. I really appreciate you being here and we'll catch you next week for more LFF.